Welcome to a new episode about simulating computer architectures. Today I'm going to speak about simulating an Intel 4040, 4040 CPU. As usually I'll make this uh, a two-part series. In this first part we'll briefly cover different aspects related to the Intel 4040 CPU. And in the second part, I will uh, discuss how uh, a simulation may actually be implemented in uh, Java. So, let's take a look. The Intel uh, 4040 CPU was introduced in 1974 as a successor to 4004 CPU. Uh, I already did a video about simulating the 4004 CPU. This was largely acknowledged as the first microprocessor and was introduced in uh, 1971. So, uh, three years later, in 1974, uh, Intel introduced this uh, 4040 CPU. Uh, and uh, they decided to keep the instruction set uh, almost identical to the 4004 CPU and they only added uh, several additional instructions we'll see this soon uh, the new CPU worked at a clock frequency of uh, 740 kilohertz it maintained uh, the principles of the previous CPU by offering a 4-bit uh, bus with the external world and on this 4-bit bus uh, it was possible to send 8-bit uh, instructions or 12-bit addresses or 4-bit data. So uh, you can see here the pinout uh, it's again mostly similar to the 4004. Uh, one thing to notice is uh, this additional uh, CM ROM 1, which allow for uh, ROM bank selection. So I guess that in the three years between the two CPUs, uh, Intel realized that uh, many programs actually uh, need more this program memory. So they introduced uh, the possibility to switch between two program memory banks uh, and uh, they also introduced uh, functionality for interrupts. So you can see here there is an interrupt pin and also an interrupt knowledge. But uh, as I already said, the external data bus uh, was uh, 4 bit wide but it was possible to send multiple of these 4 bits in order to form 12-bit addresses, for example. Uh, and uh, this was also used for I.O., uh, as we'll see soon, with uh, supporting ICs. And uh, from the CPU data sheet, uh, we noticed that the CPU can directly address 4 uh, kilobytes of 8-bit instruction words or 8 kilobytes with a bank switch so it was possible to use uh, the CPU with only one bank or uh, with uh, two banks uh, several levels of subroutine nesting uh, so this is increased from the previous CPU and 24 index registers so again uh, it's increased from uh, the previous CPU uh, I already uh, discussed in the previous video about 4004 that this 12-bit address uh, actually allows us to address uh, 4096 uh, addresses which obviously corresponds to the 4K uh, mentioned here in the datasheet so you can see this uh, CM ROM signal as an additional uh, bit in the address which uh, obviously allows to double this address space and uh, this uh, turns out to the 8K uh, mentioned in the datasheet. As usually, uh, you should uh, take a close look at the datasheet to better understand all of these signals. 
Now, uh, previously with the 4004, uh, it needed uh, supporting integrated circuits. Uh, for example, the 4001 ROM, uh, which uh, also offered IO lines. So this is a bit weird compared to today's standards. I mean, there's a, a memory chip that uh, also has IO lines. And actually, uh, this uh, IC and this other one, the RAM uh, IC, uh, also were uh, following the instructions presented on the bus. And uh, they could uh, recognize uh, when uh, there was an IO instruction uh, so that it would uh, read or write to the IO port. And in case of read, it will present. Uh, the data being read uh, on the data bus. So uh, the CPU itself did not have a way to select, to specify uh, an IO port, or an IO line, uh, but instead uh, the supporting ICs were monitoring the bus, recognized the instruction, and would perform uh, either a memory operation or an IO operation. Uh, so with the 4040, uh, it was uh, possible to use uh, the same supporting ICs. Uh, however, they introduced new supporting ICs, uh, which uh, are uh, larger ICs. And uh, there are a number of uh, general purpose 8-bit uh, uh, IO ports which could be uh, output port only, input port only, uh, or uh, combination I/O port. And, uh, well, you can uh, obviously take a look at the data sheet for each one of these, uh, but uh, it's uh, largely based on the same uh, architecture. However, if uh, here for the 4001 we only had 256 uh, words of raw. Uh, here uh, we can see we have uh, two kilobytes of uh, ROM. So uh, the main change is uh, that it got larger and uh, thus it's possible to assemble a system with uh, fewer uh, ICs. Uh, however, uh, in the case of uh, 4308, uh, they also maintained uh, the 4-bit I.O. port. So the overall architecture was pretty much the same as the 4004. Uh, now, um, looking uh, internally, and uh, actually in this slide I have an error here, it's not 4004, it's 4040 architecture. Uh, you can see uh, the registers, uh, you can see the uh, address stack. Uh, these are all uh, pretty similar to the 4004. Uh, however, uh, the size uh, has increased. And the rest here is pretty much the same as the 4004. Uh, we still see an internal 4-bit uh, uh, data bus. The accumulator is also 4-bit, and so on. Uh, so now it has 24 4-bit uh, registers, which are separated in uh, bank 0, bank 1. Uh, one thing to notice that uh, bank 1 actually has fewer registers. Uh, and uh, it uh, uses 46 instructions from the 4004, so all the existing instructions. Um, I remind you, if you haven't watched the 4004 video, that uh, the 4004 actually had 41 uh, single word or 8 bits instructions and 5 uh, 16 bits instructions, or so 2 words. And now in the 4040, uh, they added <coughs> 14 new instructions, which uh, <coughs> are used to handle interrupts, uh, halting the CPU, or uh, change between ROM banks. Uh, again, uh, you should take a look at the 4004 video that I previously did. Um, 
I spoke a bit more about uh, the structure of the instructions. Uh, you can see here an example for an word or a one word instruction and a list of these one word instructions. I've also included here the data sheets for uh, 4004 and uh, 4040. So if you look at these data sheets and uh, compare these instructions, they are the same. And uh, I mean also the way they are encoded uh, and uh, the parameters and so on. So uh, you really should uh, make a comparison and uh, see for yourself how similar they are. Uh, and again for the two word instructions, uh, again in the first instruction we have the opcode, so this part is pretty much the same. And then uh, especially for uh, uh, conditions followed by addresses or uh, complete address, uh, we would use uh, this two word uh, format. So, if we want to specify a 12-bit address uh, with an instruction, we first specify the opcode, then uh, upper address, and in the second uh, instruction word, we would specify middle address and lower address. And uh, again, these are examples of uh, such instructions that are uh, the same in both 4004 and uh, 4004 TCP. Uh, now we have a list of uh, 4040 only instructions, so these are the new instructions that uh, were added to this new CPU. And uh, you can see it's uh, for halting, uh, also for uh, supporting uh, some additional uh, registers, and uh, they also implemented an AND and OR routine. Uh, instructions that are uh, in the CPU because previously for the end, for example, you would have to write a time. Uh, then we have uh, ROM bank selection, uh, selecting uh, register banks, uh, interrupts, enable, disable, uh, and uh, well, this load accumulator from uh, for. 1,289 uh, controlled program RAM. Now, uh, regarding the simulation, uh, again, this is something that I also discussed in the 4004 video that I previously did. So, uh, maybe you should also watch that one and uh, it may make things even more clear. But, uh, uh, with uh, these types of CPUs, uh, we have the possibility to either implement a uh, simulation dedicated only to the CPU or to simulate uh, both the CPU and the supporting chips in the same simulation. In any case, in order for the CPU to work, uh, it does need to communicate with the supporting ICs. So, uh, in the first approach, uh, we would implement a CPU-only simulation, but also an individual simulation for each of the supporting uh, ICs that uh, we are interested in. And how uh, would this go? Uh, well, uh, the CPU would first write uh, the program counter address, or so the current address, it would uh, read the instruction at that address, decode it, then uh, it would uh, activate uh, RAM, uh, ROM, uh, with the appropriate uh, CM ROM and, or CM RAM signals. It would uh, write the address that uh, the CPU wants to access. Uh, then it would uh, read or write uh, the data uh, and uh, finally update uh, the registers or the accumulator. Uh, however, and uh, also in this case, uh, you would have to write simulations for the supporting ICs. As I mentioned earlier, it would have to detect if it's a memory operation or an I operation. Uh, this would be done by also uh, reading the instruction from the data bus and decoding it. And uh, then the supporting IC would appropriately return to the CPU the corresponding data. 
However, uh, if we decide to simulate everything in a single simulation, uh, so the CPU plus the support chips, uh, then uh, it's somewhat simpler uh, because the CPU would uh, read an instruction at a specified address, uh, so it wouldn't have to do this in uh, two steps, <coughs> uh, because in this case uh, the supporting IC is not simulated uh, externally, it's integrated in the same simulation. Then the CPU would uh, decode uh, the instruction, uh, then it would uh, read-write data at a specified address if needed, and this address in this case can be either memory or I.O., and uh, the simulation would know and would simply write to that location. And finally, to update the registers. So we can see that between these two, we have some uh, uh, similarities like decode instruction here. And finally, update uh, registers with the result of an instruction. Uh, but the rest is uh, much simpler uh, in this combined simulation. Uh, and again, you should uh, watch uh, my previous two videos about simulating an Intel 4004, uh, where maybe you, you will understand a bit better. Uh, and uh, in the next video, I will uh, discuss about how to implement this second option um, in Java, and how to simulate uh, the 4040 with uh, supporting ICs in uh, Java. Uh, again, it will be <coughs> a single combined simulation, so there won't be uh, separated simulations for each uh, of the ICs. Uh, and uh, finally, uh, take a look at my Java system simulator available at GitHub. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye.